Are you thinking about buying a house, but you're not quite sure how much house you can afford? And maybe something inside of you is saying, you know, the advice my realtor is giving me and the advice my banker is giving me, who, by the way, is in the business of providing loans, you know, my gut is telling me maybe I should get a second opinion. And while this video is not financial advice, I have been a fee-only financial advisor for over 20 years. And during that time, I have guided hundreds of families through their financial journey. And I'll tell you this, your gut is sounding an alarm that's probably something you should listen to. First, I'm gonna share the traditional way about thinking about how much house you can afford. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you some of my thinking that I wanna pass on to you. Okay, let's jump in. So the first thing is, we all know this, over the last five years, houses have increased on average in the United States by almost 50%. That's a huge, huge jump in a short period of time. And as I record this, according to the National Association of Realtors, the median house price in the United States is right around 400,000. And that compares five years ago to about 320,000. So you can see that big jump. And not only that, but interest rates have risen dramatically. So for today's example, we're gonna use a 7% interest rate. I'm gonna share with you two resources that you can use to look up what interest rates are. The first one is put out by the Federal Reserve, and I'll put a link in the video. And you see over the years, interest rates have dropped substantially, but in the last 18 months, they've risen rapidly. They've come off a little bit from the high. We might have seen peak interest rates, but right now they're about 7%. There's two sources that I like to find interest rates. The first one is that FRED report from the Federal Reserve. And the second one is from Mortgage News Daily. I'm not affiliated with either one, but I think they're both good sources. And you can see they're both saying about 7.1% as I film this video today for a 30 year fixed rate for somebody with good quality credit. Now, when you own a house, there's other expenses. Primarily, think about the expenses that if you were loaning somebody money, for a home, what would you insist that they pay the taxes that are gonna come due, the property taxes, so that you as the bank can pay those off. And you'd also insist that they have insurance on the home in case it burns down. So it's not just principal and interest payment on your mortgage, but it's the taxes and it's also the insurance that you have to pay. And if you don't put down 20%, you have to pay something called PMI. Now for the taxes, I'm listing a chart here where you can see what the tax rates are. They generally, property tax, they generally go from about a half a percent to 1%. Okay, so what does all this mean? Your banker and your realtor is probably gonna tell you that the rough rule of thumb is you can spend up to 28% of your gross income, your principal, your interest, your taxes, and your insurance, right? Your mortgage payment, everything that's piled in there. The bankers would tell you about 28%. Again, caution, banks are in the business of quote unquote selling loans, so be careful. Okay, so what does this mean? I'm gonna jump through a few cases here. There's a free online mortgage calculator that I think is pretty good that I'm gonna list in the show notes and you can walk through your own example. Today, I'm gonna share with you several examples. But what you do is you put in this online calculator, how much money you're putting down, what the down payment is. And for this example, for a $250,000 home, I'm assuming we're gonna put down 20%. Now I know this is low. I wanna start off with a house below the median, and then we'll do a couple above the median. Interest rate at 7%. The mortgage term is 30 years. Property tax, I'm just assuming 1%. Home insurance, I'm assuming 1%. Now, heads up, if you live in Florida or some high cost states, California and Florida residents are seeing huge increases in their property insurance cost. I'm just assuming a flat 1% for all of these examples. So you can see when I put this into this free online tool, and I wanna use a free online tool so you can put your situation in. For this free online tool, it says that the total cost, again, this is for your principal repayment, your interest, your insurance, 
in your property tax for a $250,000 home, we're putting down $50,000. Our mortgage payment each month is gonna be $1,747. Now, what kind of house can you buy for $250,000? Remember earlier, I said that the median home is about $400,000 right now. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. This is not the house I grew up in, although it doesn't look that dissimilar from the house that I spent the first half of my childhood in. You can see this house is $250,000. From that mortgage calculator, the total monthly payment is $1,747 a month. So we divide that by 0.28 and you can see you need to be making $75,000 a year. That's a gross salary and that's a household salary. Depending on, you don't necessarily need to be married. You know, if you have a partner in your life and both of you are on the mortgage, that would be a combined income. There's several factors that determine how much money a bank is gonna loan you. And one of those is the dependability of your income and then obviously your credit score. So I'm assuming you have a good credit score, but the $75,000 a year, which is right at the median household income, which is why I started with this example, that can be household, so that can be husband and wife. And you can see, it's dramatically different because if interest rates were still 3%, you'd only be a household income of $54,000. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see what a house that costs $500,000. Okay, this is an example of a $500,000 house in Austin, Texas. Okay, so we've got a home value of $500,000. We're putting down 20%, which is 100,000. So our loan is gonna be $400,000. Our interest rate is 7%. We've got a 30 year loan. Again, home insurance is 1%, $5,000. Property tax, I'm assuming 1%. It can be higher, it can be lower. Go back and look at that chart that I, I showed earlier to see what your state's at. And um, that information's from the Tax Foundation. So thank you, Tax Foundation, for this. You can see that your total monthly loan payment with your principal, interest, property tax, and insurance is just under $3,500 a month. So at $3,500 a month, you'd need to be making $12,500 a month in gross income, which is $150,000 of household income. Again, if interest rates were at 3%, you'd only need to be making a little under $110,000. So big difference there. Okay, let's jump up. What does a $750,000 house look like? Okay, so this is a photo in San Diego of what a $750,000 home would look like. I should credit Zillow for these. Thank you, Zillow. Same thing, $750,000 loan. We're gonna put down 20%, so we're financing $600,000 at 7%. 30-year fixed rate mortgage. You can see our total payment, principal, interest, insurance, and taxes is just a little under $5,250. And so $5,250, you'd have to be making $225,000 a year. And again, if interest rates were at 3%, you'd only be needing to make 160,000. Okay, so we talked about 750,000. Now let's talk about a million dollar house. So this is what a million dollar house, $980,000, Looks like in Miami, Florida. Again, we're gonna put down 20% down so we don't have to pay the principal mortgage insurance, PMI. So we're putting down $200,000. Our loan is for $800,000. Interest rate at 7%. And you can see that our monthly payment, principal interest, taxes, and insurance is gonna be just a little under $7,000 a month. Ouch, right? That's starting to hurt. And so $7,000 a month, if you take the banker's rule, which is 28% of your gross household income, the banks would say you need to be making $25,000 a month or $300,000 a year. And you can see if interest rates were lower, if they were 3%, you'd only need to be making $215,000 a year. Okay, so this is what the bank would tell you. But what would a financial advisor, somebody like me? What I would tell you is, you know, your house is your home for your family 
family. If we go back to the chart house prices, I bought the house that I raised my kids in 2006. And it was the summer of 2006. So you can see I bought almost near the peak, right? So as far as timing what you, you do, if it's your home and you think you're going to be there seven or 10 years, in my case, I thought I'd be there 20 years, which is about what I ended up being there. Yes, my timing could have been a lot better, but you know what, that was for my family. So the first thing a financial advisor would say is, is this your home or is this an investment? And if it's your home and you're planning on staying there for a while, you don't have to worry, I don't think, too much about timing. Now, you know, if housing prices 2008, 2009, if that ever happens again, and knock on wood, it doesn't, you're gonna wish like I did that you had waited. Houses basically fell 20% shortly after I bought. But you know what, I did fine. Again, because it was my home, it's where I wanted to raise my family. But as far as dollars, what should you budget? You know, Americans have a rule of thumb that if we save 10% a year, we're gonna be okay. And I wish that was the case, but you know, that's not what I've seen. I think we need to get as close to 20% as we can. So I go by a rule that, and again, I'm not a big fan of rules of thumb, and I think you should work with a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice, but I like the 50-30-20 rule, which says that 50% of your budget, 50% of your after-tax household income, 50% goes to your needs your mortgage, anything, you know, related to your house, repairs on your house. But also, you know, we need to have a car to get to work. Uh, in today's world, we need to have internet. We need to have a laptop, a computer at home. We need to have a cell phone in today's world. So what your needs are versus what your wants are. And in wants are, you know, the things that we really enjoy doing, our hobbies, going on vacation with our family, maybe upgrading our car, even though it's still running well. So 50% after taxes, but before you put aside money for like health insurance, whatever your copay is with your company, 401k. So really just your paycheck, less the taxes that they withhold. 50% on your needs, 30% on your wants, vacations, things like that. And then really shoot to have 20% savings. And I know that's hard to do, but your future self is gonna thank you for doing that. What I would say is start where you are now, do the best that you can, and if you're not saving close to 20%, few of us are, the next time you get a raise, half of that goes to your future self, half of that goes to your current self, and start iterating to get there. Again, the 50, 30, 20 rule is based on your gross pay less your taxes. If you're doing a 401k contribution, and I hope you are if your employer matches, it's before that. So it's just take your paycheck, less what the federal government takes, less what the state takes, less what social security takes. Gross on that level, 50% on needs, 30% on wants, and try to build up to 20% on savings. And you know, we work hard in order to be able to do this, but I wanna be sure that you enjoy your retirement when the time comes. And that's what this video up here is all about. Five reasons to retire as soon as you can. I'll see you in there. Bye-bye.